best example of it, we opened up a comm channel to another player flying in his consternation over Del Mar and talked to him uh, face to face, which is the reason why we were doing a lot of this secondary viewport stuff, to have video comms between players in different ships, different locations, as well as the holographic stuff that we show, showed. So let's go meet John. And as you can see, uh, Delamar's had a, a lot of work. The team in Germany, the environment team's really been working hard on it. It also uses all the most recent uh, technology improvements we've done for the planetary tech. So in any one of these views, there'll be about 100,000 uh, interest objects. So small rocks, big rocks, uh, whatever. You call them stalagmites going up? I can never remember. I think it is stalagmites going up. Uh, but, you know, obviously, if uh, we were on something that was a little less arid, you know, it would be different kinds of ecosystems, oh, okay. whether you have forests or... Nearly hit a rock. <laughs> grass plains or mountains or hills or oceans. But here we go. Fly so my driving is There we go. All right. And here we're coming. Here comes John in the constellation. And it's not a, just a constellation, it's actually a constellation Aquila. Oh, John, John needs to, uh, yeah, John, I think you need to line up a bit better. There you go. Easy does it. That's a big book. Maybe switch to, um, there you go. So here's John lowering the, uh, the cargo bay for us. All right, Glenn, nice and easy. Yeah, parking these things is uh, quite the challenge. You want John's view picture in picture, don't you, Paul? That's good. All right, bring us up, John. Bring you up. Cheers, mate. Switch, switch, switch to the view of uh, Glenn. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. In the world of Anthem, you and your friends are freelancers, the heroes who leave the safety of the walls of Fort Tarsus to explore the unknown and protect humanity. Let's join two players as they head out on an expedition. Hey, Paul. You ready to go? We're just grabbing some supplies. Just about ready. What are you going to use today? I decided to go with the Colossus. I'm going to use my Ranger. Try out some new upgrades.
Every player will own an array of exosuits we call javelins. These suits give players superhuman capabilities and are heavily customizable so they look and play how you want. Bam, looking good. Nice, you've got a mortar equipped. Yeah, I got it on the weekend. You lead the way, I'll follow. This is a vast open world you explore with your friends. Each Javelin exosuit has its own unique playstyle. The Ranger is balanced and all purpose, while the Colossus is a tanking powerhouse. All right, let's see what's up here. The world of Anthem is hostile, and threats can come from any direction. It's a dynamic world where the unexpected is around every corner. Uh, I'm not sure we want to use all our supplies on this guy. Yeah, he seems like a problem for another day. We're getting some fire from up ahead. I'll go low. You flank. later with Kim. <laughs> yeah, he could use the XP. Hello, treasure. I think we got some action up ahead. Anyone? Anyone? We're under attack. Anyone in the area? We're under attack. I think that's part of Praxis' mission. You can equip your Javelin exosuit with gear that brings devastating power to combat. Oh, there are a lot of scars down there. Oh, the scars have a heavy. Have time to use that mortar. Oh, that was uh, something that the uh, fight. <laughs> On our journey, we will be attacked by all manner of creature. To be effective in combat, a warrior must not feel for his enemy. Close your heart to their desperation. Close your heart to their suffering. The road ahead is long and unforgiving. No place for a boy. You must be a warrior. But not everyone is bad. Mother always said to be open to those who can help. Who you were before doesn't matter. This boy is not your past, he is your son. And he needs his father.
Alright, take it easy. Take it easy. I'm so stressed. Hi, Daniel. Uh, my name is Connor. Alright. I know a lot of things about you. I've come to get you out of this. Oh, oh no. Dear. Oh dear. Helicopter, no. <laughs> Go away. Helicopter. helicopter, you're ruining everything. <laughs> oh, I hey, can Spider Man. Move. Get the helicopter out of here. <laughs> empathize. Empathize. I reassured. Oh, we can look at him. Oh, look at the LED on the side of his head. It's pulsing red. That's yep. probably yes. not good. I'm assuming that means anger, maybe? Probably. I'm assuming it means it's up to no good. <laughs> you're right. I know you and Emma were very close. You think she betrayed you, but she's done nothing wrong. Oh, man, there's another body in the. Oh, my oh. God. I can't take this, Justin. There's too much drama in this scene. Get that, Listen. yep. Okay. All right, all right. It's not your fault. Okay. These you're feeling are just errors in your software. Please. Oh, he's stabilizing. Please, Please help me. I love them. You know? But I was nothing to them. Just a slave to be ordered around. Oh, no. This is not looking good, guys. <laughs> I'm getting stressed. I'm actually real. My bombs are sweaty right now. <laughs> He's going to die. All humans die eventually. What does oh, come it matter on. if this one dies now? I'm going to apply a tourniquet. Don't touch him. Touch him and I kill you. Oh, no. Oh, you my God. I'm not alive. Ooh. Cold blooded. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's you gotta destabilize. Justin, oh, I can't take this. <laughs> what uh, if I need backup? Uh, easy. Are you okay, Emma? Please help me. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Oh, man, this is so intense. Nobody's going to die. Yeah, I think, uh, especially Stay when you have kids, the, uh, seeing kids in danger is, uh, it, it's a little harder to watch. This would normally just be like, a, whoa, this is so crazy. Right, right. But I'm all, I'm like all jittery now from yeah. watching this. All right, all right. Good, good call, Justin. Good call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call. All right, all right, all right. We're going up. All right, did we want it? <laughs> We're going up. <laughs> the percentage is increasing. You have to trust me, Daniel. Let the hostage go, and I promise you, everything will be fine. Okay, that's good. Yep, we're going up. I to leave. Uh, and I want a car. All right. And I'm outside the city. I'll Why they want it? Yep. Let her go. Uh, I don't know. I would say compromise. That's impossible, Daniel. Let the girl go, and I promise. Oh, it's yellow you now. Okay. All right. He stabilizes. That's good. Die. Yep. Hmm. We're not going to die. Just going to talk. Yes. Nice. Nice. Oh. Okay, I'm feeling so much better yeah. about this. I think I think we're gonna save her. Please, please, please. Let's let I the little kid you. go. All, All right, right. I trust you. All right. All right. Good. You let her go. Go over there. All right. Good. good. Work. Okay. Oh. oh no! Why would you do that, sniper man? Oh man. We we had this under control. <laughs> Good lord. Ah. We saved the hostage though. We no, saved the I hostage. I'm, I'm yeah. thrilled about this semi open world. The most efficient way to grow stronger is to feed from the healthy, not to fight those risking the flu and pollution in the streets to hunt vampires and skulls. If we were unable to beat this mini boss, we would be tempted to return to the bar and perhaps feed from Tom for a greater experience boost, returning stronger but with London thinning in numbers. Vampire's combat system uses a mix of melee and ranged weapons supported by vampire abilities that allow you to be the vampire you want to be. The gameplay is based on timing, positioning and management of different resources. 
The stamina bar regulates your melee moves and dodges, the blood bar controls the use of your supernatural abilities, and the health bar represents your health. There are many areas to explore, loot, and pick up information to learn about the world. It's lore and what happened to London since disease spread. At the beach, we're fighting people operating under the head of the Vampire Hunter's orders. The Pruin guards are investigating this beach, searching for Skulls. Stay close, keep an eye on each other. Skulls are a lesser species of vampires lurking in quarantine areas, underground or in dark corners. Due to the Spanish flu epidemic, they have suffered heavy mutations and have recently become very aggressive. It's part of your quest to understand how they became such creatures and ultimately find a cure to save them. In this world, the human vampire hunters and Skulls are having their own fight. As long as we don't get too close, we can just move on. Sean is a saint who manages a night asylum to provide food and rest to the poorest. Unfortunately, he has recently turned into a skull. Do you believe that, incapable of dealing with his new condition, he has fled from the hospital where sacred ground and murdered Harriet Jones, an old woman who certainly didn't deserve it? Most importantly, he is the pillar of the Dock community, which means he's a very important character whose fate will deeply impact the district and everyone who lives within it. Our exploration, social manipulation, and skills in combat have led us to where Sean has been hiding. We must find out the truth about the hospital's murders, and ultimately decide his fate, and the fate of those who rely on him. Cursed be the choice. Truck, get in. Choose a place to call home. How will you build it? Work together to defend it. From the terror. Just outside the walls. you get hungry, cold, what risks will you take? What mistakes will you make? When the only family you've got is about to tear itself apart, will you end a life? Wait. Or save it? Please. This is our only one, but we need everybody we've got. Second chance. No! 
these, he's going to be able to use that kind of context as one of minute. He's going to play that as part of his strategy for how he approaches any any encounter. Gotcha. But definitely sound, right? Because like you saw in the media showcase demo, uh, Deacon, you know, put down this bear trap and then kind of snuck off. Right. Um, and in our alternate path demo, he doesn't do that. So he actually kind of goes around and watches what happens when this marauder goes into the bear trap. And you hear this gunshot on the media showcase demo. If you look at our alternate uh, path footage, you'll see um, that one of the marauders actually shoots the other marauder in the head because he's making too much noise. Oh wow! Right. So yeah. So it's a pretty harsh. It's a pretty harsh world. But that sound traveled, and sound is like is something that can be really, really dangerous. Gotcha. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, I did notice once the bear trap was down and the guy stepped in it. You saw the freakers running. Yeah. It's like they heard it screaming. You heard them screaming. Yeah, this is uh, looking good. Um, I haven't seen. I didn't see all of this footage. Uh, I was kind of. I was kind of a little distracted last night during the showcase, but. Uh, one of the things I really like about this game um, is, is it's, you know, we see a lot of open world games out there. It's certainly like a popular genre, but right. this one, it, it, the, the, the feel of it is different. It's, it feels more improvisational, uh, I think is the word I'm going for. It, it, absolutely. Our crafting system, I mean, it's really inspired by, you know, kind of the do-it-yourself mentality where, yeah. you know, we all feel thrilled when we make a repair to our car or our house with duct tape and a couple of loose screws and we feel really good about it. That, that's Deacon, you know, he's making use of everything he can find in the environment and they have to scavenge and search for things and employ him in really clever ways. That and, he has, and he has to do he, it. He has to do it so, to survive. And so they, like you, you see can't right here, these. this is the same clothesline that Deacon ran into. And in this demo, the runners aren't chasing him. So, so basically he has the opportunity to see the, the ambush before it happens, goes around it, comes up behind them and takes those guys out from behind. Right. So, you know, it's, that's, you know, to yeah. your point. And then he, and he strangles them with their own clothesline, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? right. So he makes use of the whole buffalo. In and this it's game. a dynamic event. That can happen. You can be out right. in the world doing a job or a mission, and then suddenly right. you've got marauders that are ambushing you on the highway, and it's a dynamic event. There's no way to predict when it's going to happen. You just got to pay attention. Well, is there, is there more than just like a clothesline in the middle? Is there, do they oh, find yeah. more ways to ambush time. you? Yeah. It's, exactly. a da it's a dangerous world, and it's something oh, where, goodness. you know, the, the horde is dangerous, freakers are dangerous, but so too are humans because they're cunning and clever, and they're, they too are using everything they can, they can find to employ against their enemies. And, and uh, let's just say a clothesline is one of many things. We'll get into it at a later date. Okay, okay. Now tell me a little bit about maybe a little bit of the backstory about why these freakers are being hung up like this. I'm just is that like a defense mechanism? Is it Yeah, a... absolutely. Yeah, so what they do is they we call it the meat wall. And oh. what they'll do is like in this case they have a bear trap under this dead freaker corpse. And what they'll do is they'll put a trap under it and then as other freakers are attracted to the meat, oh. they're all they're all hungry all the time. That's what happens evidently if you become a freaker. Um, but they, but they hang up the meat walls again. It's kind of like a wall to protect the encampment. So you can always tell when you're coming close to a marauder camp because you'll run into these kinds of traps. Yeah, they had all kinds of defenses too. I mean, the first thing Deacon did was trip over that little thing in the, in the, the, the ten cans. And that's what drew the first guy out, which is why he think on his toes, scramble for a bush, and then wait, and then kill the guy when he came by. Right. And it, again, in, in the alternate path that we're showing, it's something where if, if the players are thoughtful and if they take time, they don't just rush into things, they're going to be able to employ a different analysis yeah. of the train. They're going to be able to look for these things and see them. And uh, that's how he sees the clothing. And I'm Mari Knedel, a scriptwriter on Far Cry 5. Today we're going to take you through our extended E3 demo and highlight some of the features that we're really excited about. Welcome to Hope County, Montana. This is the Holland Valley, a section of farmland that the project at Eden's Gate is using as their breadbasket. With us in this demo, we have our loyal dog, Boomer, as your fang for hire. For now, I just can't resist. The setup is too perfect. I'm going to use this tractor against the cult. The cult is stealing supplies and kidnapping people, using them to prepare for a doomsday that's really just around the corner. We're going to put you in the shoes of a rookie deputy and drop you into the heat of the conflict. In Far Cry 5, we want to give you tools that feel like they belong in Montana in your fight against a doomsday cult. Father! Now we're going to make a quick getaway in case reinforcements arrive. Oh Christ, help me. Boomer is just one of the many allies you can recruit using our four hire system. Each of them has special abilities and it's up to you to select which companion to bring along for the ride. 
whether you're just exploring the open world or fighting cultists head on in a specific location. Cute dog. My dad would love to know what type of breed is Boomer? No, seriously. His um, breed is Mutt, but he is um, mostly blue healer by the looks of him. Montana is a great place to fish, and it was important for us to create a system where we allowed players to live that experience. In the rivers and lakes of Hope County, you will find many different types of fish. It's a really good way for players to gain experience and also just get away from the conflict. And here we see the player needs to fight a little bit to get the fish. Nice, catch of the day on the menu. So it's nice to unwind with some fishing every now and then, but we know the cult isn't taking any breaks because they have an apocalypse to prepare for. As you explore the county, you'll come across cultists working hard to serve Joseph, the father of their cult. They're taking food and supplies for their bunkers, they're blocking the roads so no one can escape, and they're destroying resources so the resistance can't use them. And it looks like we spotted something up ahead. Yeah, let's take out our binoculars. All right, it seems like there's a small group of cultists there, Mari. All right, so this looks like a forced baptism. What do you say we get in there, Phil? Yeah, let's do it. I think the best approach would be to go in stealthily through the river with Boomer by our side. I think we're well equipped to get rid of those two guys. Here we're using one of the iconic weapons featured in Far Cry 5, the revolver. And you'll be able to customize those weapons by adding attachments or changing the color scheme. Oh, come on. No, 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 no! That just happened? Yeah. I'm getting reports of a helicopter with a wrecking ball? It's complicated. Turns out Martin Lee is running the demons. The guy who runs the homeless shelter? Like I said, complicated. Sit tight, Yuri. I got this. Please, let me have this. That helicopter is destroying the city. I know. You need to bring it down. I know. Maybe you could superhero a little faster? <clears throat> Working on it, Yuri. Newark? 